As you might guess from the name, SpecBiz is focused on viewing and analyzing 1D spectra. I'll be showing how to load data into the app and retrieving it from the app, how to do basic plot interactions, fit models to spectra via the app, and how to overplot spectra lines. First thing to do is we import SpecBiz from JDAViz. We create a SpecBiz object. I'm going to call it viz, and then calling viz.app will open the app in the notebook. Obviously, an empty app is not that interesting, so I'm going to download a file from SDSS that just has a spectrum in it and load it via the load spectrum method, which uses on the back end the specutils reader functionality. Now, as you can see, when I use load spectrum, the data is loaded and automatically displayed in this area, which I'm going to refer to as a viewer. SpecBiz only has one viewer, uh, but that terminology will be a little more relevant later when we show configs that have multiple viewers in them. You can see uh, the plot has been scaled automatically based on the data, but we can always change the bounds of the plot either via the notebook, for example, via x limits or y limits. Uh, we can always auto scale back to the original bounds. And in addition to doing that from the notebook, we also have pan and zoom tools in the GUI. So we have a sort of freeform one where you can zoom both axes at the same time. You can lock the y-axis and pan and zoom only the x-axis, and likewise for the y-axis. If I were to subsequently load more data, for example here, I'm just going to create a little dummy Gaussian and load it again via load spectrum. Uh, you can see it automatically gets added to the viewer and the plot is rescaled to uh, include that data. Now that I have two spectra plotted, uh, it might be useful to distinguish them a little bit more. So I'm again going to go up to this toolbar. I'm going to click on this gear icon, and you can see there's three tabs here. Data, just lists the data sets that are available to display. I could, for example, deselect the spectrum I added or reselect it to choose whether or not to display it. Uh, and then in the layer tab, we have the option to change colors, change line widths, good stuff like that. For now, I'm going to change this back to being gray and just go ahead and get rid of that uh, second data set because I'm really interested in the real data. So say I want to do some analysis on this data, what might I do? Well, first of all, I'm going to zoom in on this mission feature that I think looks interesting. And to tell the app that I'm interested in a particular area, I'm going to define what's called a subset. Subsets are listed in this region here, this area of the app. Uh, currently, there are none, so the only option to select is create a new one. And next to that, there are options uh, for operations one can do. I'm going to select Add for now. So back in my toolbar, I pick the Select Range of X Values tool, and I'm just going to select a section of the spectrum. So now you can see it's added this subset one here, and you can see that in the viewer, that part of the spectrum is colored red to show that it's part of subset one. I'm interested in the broad feature here, so I'm going to select Remove, and again, my X range tool, and I'm just going to get rid of these little spiky bits from my subset. So now uh, those have been, again, masked out. They're back to being gray, like background data that I don't want, and my subset, again, is in red. There are lots of things I can do through the app now that it knows that I'm interested in this area of the data. First thing I'm going to show is the model fitting application. So under model fitting, I'm going to select subset one because I want to fit this region, not the entire data set. I'm going to add a constant model component. It looks like the background here is fairly constant. And I'm going to add a Gaussian because that's, of course, that Gaussian looking feature is the thing I'm actually interested in. You can see for each model component that's added, there's a model parameter dropdown, which is the app, you know, it attempts to populate it with some sort of semi-intelligent guess. It doesn't always do a great job, so I'm going to help it out a little bit here. And in, in the equation editor, 
I'm going to define how I want to combine my model components. Uh, and I'll just note on the back end, this is all using the uh, AstroPy modeling machinery. By default, my model is just called model. That is fine. I'm going to click fit, and you can see these parameters have been updated. It's, of course, a little hard to know if these are good fits just based on looking at numbers. So I'm going to click add to viewer. And then over here in my viewer data selection, I now have a model option. This is the label I gave the model. If I click that, I can see it plot over my original data, and I can see that that plot, uh, that fit is pretty darn good. I can save out the fitted model to a pickle file. This just saves out the AstroPy model object itself. Uh, I can also, since I'm proud of this fit, go into the toolbar, click on this disk icon, and either save it as a PNG or an SVG. So I'm going to open it as a PNG. And you'll be able to see this only uh, saves out a PNG of the plot itself. It you know, doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the app controls around it. It's just the plot axes and anything that you've plotted on the plot. One more thing that I might want to use this model fitting machinery for is, let's say, I want to normalize this data. First thing I would do, I'm going to create a new selection go back to adding things to my subset. So I'm going to create a new subset. Let's get rid of the model as well. And I'm just going to select, instead of the feature itself, I'm going to select some of these nice constant looking areas of continuum on either side. Now that I've done that, back to the model fitting tool, I can select subset two. And I'm going to get rid of that Gaussian because now I just want to fit a constant, get rid of it in my model equation, fit, Again, add to viewer. Now my dropdown, since I didn't change the model label, you can see it's just replaced to the previous model. And if I display that as we expect, it's a constant. I no longer need subset two now that I've created that model, so I'm going to delete it. And now down in the notebook, let's see how we can get data out and do some operations with it. So if I scroll down, you can always get any data that are currently displayed with viz.getSpectra. So if I do that and look at the keys of the dictionary that are returned, you can see the original data is still plotted. There's a subset that is shown, and I have my model. The subsets are essentially the data plus a mask. And you can see, let's say we just look at the model that we've gotten out. You can see that the objects returned by GetSpectra are specutils, Spectrum 1D objects. So you get all of the nice machinery that comes with that when you get data out of the viewer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flux of the original data, divide it by the flux of that model fit, just a constant, use that to create a new Spectrum 1D, and then load that back into the app. So now if I go back up to my app, let's get rid of these and just plot the normalized data. I have an artifact here for some reason. Uh, now you can see it's been normalized. That is useful, well, for many reasons, as astronomers know. Uh, but in this particular context, it's useful because we can select the normalized spectrum and do some quick look analysis functions. Uh, I will also note you can see that uh, subset one, that red area, has been automatically applied to this data that I loaded, this normalized spectrum. So these subsets are things that exist independently of the data and can be applied to any data sets. So in my line analysis tool, you know, I'm only displaying the normalized spectrum, but I can still select that subset applied to the normalized data. And you can see it automatically spits out a line flux, an equivalent width, centroid, and two measures of the Gaussian width. So those are just some quick look things. The last of these tools that I'm going to show is line lists. And I'm going to switch to a different notebook just so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down quite as far. So let me start the app and load it. Uh, there's a few different ways that users can define spectral lines that they want to add to their plot. Uh, the back end is all based on AstroPy tables. So the user can always create a table in the notebook of some lines. The minimum amount of information is just the line names and the rest values. 
So if I create a table and use load line list, uh, you can always access the spectral lines that have been added via the spectral lines attribute. So you can see the table that's being stored on the back end. You can see I only define name and the rest value, but you could also define a redshift. You could define colors for each line. You could give it a list name. Uh, by default, that is custom. Here, I'm going to add two more lines and say they belong to the test list, which we'll see why that's useful in a moment. But now that I have some lines defined, I can plot them via plot spectral lines. I can then erase them if I would like via the erase spectral lines method. And you can see those have disappeared. The reason that giving them list names is useful, so you can see under our line list GUI tool here, uh, we have a custom list, which is always available. And now we also have a test list. And under each list, you can see the lines that belong to that list. You can do, well, you uh, should actually show them so that you can see, but you can change colors and opacities. In addition to defining your own via the notebook, you can always define a new line under the custom list in the GUI if you just want to add a single line. So you can see that has appeared there. And in addition to defining custom lists yourself via AstroPy tables, uh, our package comes with some preset line lists that one can access and load via either the notebook or the GUI. So available line lists tells you what there is. Then you can just use load line list and see that they've been loaded. And if I plot those, there they are. Now that's a lot of lines. One thing you can do if it's too many and you're only interested in a few of them is just go in to the list and hide all and then only select, say, a few lines that you are actually interested in. You could also select presets and load them from this GUI as well. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that all of these lists exist as CSV files with uh, there's a single YAML configuration file basically giving their names. And the user could always, you know, if you have a uh, particular set of lines that you're always going to be interested in your work, you could create one of those files and add it to the configuration file and then have them show up in this nice GUI to just always be able to load as you work. Thank you.